everyone, it is the captain. Welcome back to the channel. A big hello to each and every one of you that like and subscribe to these videos and you share them. Let's do it together in a live stream around the world with all of your buddies, all of your pals, and all of your mates. Welcome to a very special live stream presentation of Aftershock. This is what I'm going to start calling these little live streams now. So Aftershock is a program where I'm going to start just doing live streams designed for you wonderful people. So we've got the Nightcap Nation, you know, the live Nightcap show that's on a Friday night here in Australia. And now Aftershock, which will appear here, there and everywhere for these type of videos. So in an Aftershock video, we are literally going to be looking at, you know, sovereign citizens, Karens and DUIs and dickheads all around the world together. You know, as one unit, as one cohesive, you know, group of people. Cohesive. <laughs> Why, that's ever fucking going to happen. Tonight, honestly, well, tonight, my time, morning, your time, afternoon, I don't know where you are. You're all around the bloody world. So, big hello, honestly, to each and every one of you. I know what you're all here for because it said it in the title. Uh, I do want to say a big hello to everybody out there first. So, uh, if you are out there and you want to say good day, please let us know oh great no thank you very much anthony's there let me quickly do a roll call if we will um what have we got we got uh we got philip philip's there anthony's there jason's there griffey hey griffey william all the way he's, he's a scotsman living in france so there you go uh who else have we got uh d-man's in the house as well ryan is there rock out with your cock out as far as i say uh george from uh, southeast michigan is there beck Back from the Welsh News Network. Don't forget to catch their show on their channel uh, by like tomorrow morning, my time, but I think it's about 20 hours or something from now. Uh, and I'm sure they're going to go in a lot more detail than I do. Uh, who else we got? Justin is there. We got, uh, what else we got? Who else we got? Who else we got? Carolyn, UK Carolyn's in the house. Century herself, she's hanging out there. Uh, who else we got? Who else we got? Oh, cool, Kelly Waters. Bloody early your time, big fella, for you to be up watching this. Um, and anyone that's watching us on replay as well, it's going to be a long one. So if you are watching it on replay, hey, get a sandwich ready because we're actually going to watch the full courtroom appearance of the one, the only, Sov King himself, Chili from fucking uh, Delete Laws. We're going to have a look at him because today, mark this in your calendars, ladies and gentlemen, mark it and celebrate it every year on this date so it actually happened on the 19th uh of march us time so the 20th uh, of the third my time and whatever time it is around your place uh mark it in your calendars because chili had to face the music in a nevada courtroom for his two active warrants of obstructing and resisting and he put that video up on his channel a few uh oh, must have been over a year ago now and um he had that, uh, the whole run in where he got arrested and, you know, he was carrying on like a fucking pork chop. So in that video, he legitimately went fuck around and find out. And he did. In fact, he has played the biggest game of fuck around and find out that we've seen so far, because not only did he get done on the day, he has now been sentenced to 180 days in jail, in a Nevada jail to be precise, which from what I understand, is a fucking jail in Nevada. This is the extent of my knowledge of a Nevada jail. Now I'm hoping as uh, someone that has worked in the, uh, the system before and all that sort of stuff that I can probably shine a bit of a light on what we hear and see. Now the other thing about it is um, I haven't watched this whole video, right? Like the rest of the world, I've probably seen little snippets uh definitely what happens uh in the end of the video but i have not watched the full proceedings and i had an option today i could have sat there and try and figured out how to do a hour and 40 minute video which in my time would have stretched it out with all the comments and jokes and all that sort of shit that i come up with the, uh, the, the fucking video could have gone for three hours so i thought the best thing to do is share this this experience and my raw reactions with your raw reactions if you haven't seen the entirety of this court uh court case you're in luck because we're going to watch it um and a big shout out to uh to the guys that actually broadcasted it live there was a few people that broadcasted it live as well i know welsh news network put up a few snippets here there and everywhere 
Um, there was a whole bunch of uh, wonderful channels out there, but there was a great guy who obviously does these type of videos where he just broadcasts the entire live stream on his channel. And we're going to look at his channel tonight, which is great. Um, so a big thank you to him. And I will put uh, the proper details in the, uh, in the, you know, the chat and all that sort of stuff. Uh, you know the description and stuff let me just see if i can grab the name of his channel before we get started because i think that's pretty bloody important considering we're using his footage uh let me go through it it's here somewhere joe blows youtube does that sound right that doesn't sound right that's probably not it oh there's me look at that uh our nevada judges incorporated is the name of his channel so uh go and check him out as well it's his video obviously the state of nevada versus jose chile de castro um or discussed <laughs> chili decastrated um is how i'm going to start referring to him now um so go and check them out again i'll put a link to their video as well our, our nevada judges incorporated is the name of that channel so go and check them out um oh i see the old phil's turned up as well g'day phil hanging out there look i might um I might just turn on the comments so we can all see each other bloody having a nice chat with one another. Uh, and I have no say now of what pops up on the screen. It will just pop up on the screen when it pops up. Uh, that way you guys are part of the fun and or excitement that happens. Now you've got to remember there is about a 35 second delay between me talking and you typing. And that's a YouTube thing. I haven't been able to rectify that. Um, and now that Welsh News Network, like Beck, uh, Becca from from Welsh News Network is here. I need to have a chat to you a bit later, Doug, because I need to work out how to use Streamlabs because I'm using OBS at the moment. So I can't have anyone else here listening with me. Otherwise, they don't hear anything because OBS apparently just likes hoarding the audio to themselves. So let's do it. This is the full courtroom appearance of Chile, aka Dumbfuck Laws. Uh, let's see how well it goes. Did he pack his trifold? These are the questions we need answers to. Obviously, he's a, you know, a constitutional law scholar. So he's obviously going to get away with everything because that's, you know, that's how it works, isn't it? Yeah, he's a constitutional law scholar. You just ask him. So if he can fucking get out of it, then surely, you know, there's hope for the rest of us. Let's see how all of his constitutional law studies pay off because I think we all fucking know the answer. All right, let's bring it up. <clears throat> so we are going to uh, jump in literally just as he gets called to the stand. Um, as you can see, the guys there on um, Nevada Law Judges uh, do a really good job showing shit, which is great. So there's a... Jeez, what's that? Is that his old fucking... Look, look, look here. Look at this fucking photo. Yeah, this is a dude that... Uh, yeah, he should be on an Oral B commercial. Show everybody how sucking cock makes your teeth white. Look at him go. All right. Actually, before we get started, I forgot a drink. Hang on one sec. Talk amongst yourselves. I figured if I'm going to be sitting here for an hour and 40 minutes straight, I probably should stay hydrated. All right. <laughs> if I was him 23, that doesn't bloody surprise me. All right, let's have a look. Let me know if you can hear it okay, too. For your attorney, okay? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Jose Castro, 23 CR 013015. Good morning. All right, so we've got, we got the details. This is the uh, district state, or oh, deputy district uh, attorney for the state. We've got the judge. We've got everything going in, going well. G'day to uh, Aminus for turning up as well. All right, here we go. Good morning, Mike. Can you on behalf of the defendant's person with you for this morning? You got to feel for so this I fucking dude. I signed two media requests that permit recording or photographing these proceedings, but I have not granted any other requests to record or live stream these proceedings. So I need Mr. DeCastro and everybody else who wants to stay in the courtroom to surrender their phones. Or you can leave. Oh, fucking good job, man. Oh, good job. I'm not going to pause it too often. I'm going to try and come in over the top. But good job. She's just fucking said, no one is to live stream this. We've got the sole rights, maybe CBS, but no one else. And if you've got a fucking phone and you want to record it, get the fuck out. So <laughs> she's off. We're off to a great start. Probably not. Take one for you. 
any Mr. DeCastro that empty all of his pockets. What's that? Yeah, empty, empty your pockets, pockets and give up your phones to the judge. Okay. I have to give you my phones? Yeah. My phones have to be completely off? Yep. Yes, fuckhead, hand them over. You want to be part of your okay. YouTube channel. Sorry. You already are. Great. You already are. Awesome. No. I'm not going to get into this guy, though. I'll get into some else. No, no. They're going to go to my marshal. He's a pig. He's a pig? He's a pig. Okay. Oh, chili, dude! Dude! What the fuck, man? <laughs> Even Saul Goodman wouldn't be able to fucking justify that. So I'm not going to permit you to speak to anybody in my courtroom in that manner. And if you don't want to apologize, I'm going to hold you in contempt. I apologize to the court, Your Honor. No, you can apologize to... They've done nothing to you. Actually, Your Honor, when you were here, you came over and gave me a directive for no reason and started telling me what to do. Okay, well... I, I have all the respect and welcome to the court. I follow the rule of law all the time. No, <laughs> it is, it is their, their job to maintain the safety and security of the court. I agree with you, Your Honor. So... If you want to speak like that in my courtroom, I'm going to hold you in contempt. And if I hold you in contempt, you're going to jail. That is not my wish. Okay? I wish you All right. So it's everyone else's wish, though. I want, I want to make that very clear, Your Worship. It is fucking everyone else's wish that he goes to jail. So I need to, you to empty your pockets too. Suit pocket, pants pocket. This is this is illegal. This is, this is a violation of my Fourth Amendment. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. I don't have any recording devices on me. What are you talking about? How much? Suit jacket. You're very <laughs> welcome. This is preposterous. No, it really not. is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Mr. your phone too. Oh. They're recording everything. LC, good morning. <laughs> they have they have a media request. Right, and I'm I'm not recording anything. Is that your your guy here took my phone, so he's on his phone's not on. Right. <laughs> oh. You can take the lawyer's phone too. No, I'm not going to take the lawyer's phone. He's okay. an officer of the court. All right. Do we have everybody's phones? Are they off? You would think, as a constitutional law scholar, he would know that she has the right to confiscate phones. Like, you'd just naturally assume that a constitutional law scholar would fucking know this. Okay. All right, good. All right. All right, this is the time set for the trial of State of Nevada versus Jose, Jose De Castro, 23 CR 0135. G'day, Daryl. Right. I'll Kate check his prison wallet. Yes, we are, Your Honor. How many witnesses do you have? Witnesses, Kate, one. All this right. one. There's a defense ready to proceed. Yes, Your Honor. All right. I have your request to convert counsel to standby counsel. I'm going to deny that request. Um, either you represent him or he should have previously requested a Feretta canvas to represent himself. But I just consider that a delay tactic, so that request is denied. Are you ready to proceed otherwise? Yeah, yeah man, you, you're spot on. Maybe you should have pulled out his trifold and go, no, actually, in the trifold, <laughs> it does state that I can legally represent myself. <laughs> she, he wanted to be co counsel and she's like, go fuck yourself. I'm assuming you are. Yes, sir. All right, let's take these call the first witness. Yes, Your Honor. The state calls witness Brandon Bell. Good morning, Your Honor. And he's in the ante room. Put this in me. Hear it better? All right, what are we doing? We're bringing out the first witness by the looks of it. Who's going to be the first witness? Look at this. Fucking TV cameras are there going out. We're recording this shit. Who have we got? Get old matey Nick. Oh, here we go. This is the officer, the arresting officer. Or the, what is he, deputy? Solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Please be seated. State your name for the record and spell it first and last name, please. And you're officially married. It's Brandon Bork. Brandon is B R A N D E N. Bork. B O U R Q U E. Thank you. Please go ahead. I told you I wasn't going to pause this too often, but I need to take time out to uh, to talk about the uh, the defence attorney here. She's uh, she's sort of piqued my interest. Have a look at her, All right? Just on that side of the the camera. Look at that. You wouldn't mind fucking falling asleep next to that, would you? Like she would probably have a problem with it, especially if she woke up with you just you know looking at her. Um, but apart from that, you know. thank you, sir. Good morning. Good morning, uh, sir. How are you employed? I'm a police officer with the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. Okay. How long so have you been cop. employed with Metro? Um, 
just over eight years. Um, what is your, um, like, uh, what's your occupation there? Like, where are you assigned? I currently am a field training officer and sergeant in area command. All right, so he's fucking so pretty well trained. Officer yes, that also trains um, newer officers. Yes. Okay. Hey, um, so he knows his shit. Employed with Metro, I, I'm assuming you are, because you've been employed for eight years, back on um, March 15th of 2023. Yes, I was. Were you a patrol officer at that time? Yes, I was. <laughs> I wouldn't be sleeping either, actually. <laughs> yes, I do. Um, can you describe the uniform? It would be the same uniform I'm wearing today. Okay, so for the record, you're wearing um, a tan uniform with the logo of Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department um, located throughout your, your shirt. Yes. Okay. Um, as a patrol officer, do you have access to or utilize a March patrol vehicle? Yes. And can you describe what the, this March patrol vehicle looks like? It's black and white in color and it has the LVMPD's logo on all sides. Okay. And is it also equipped with like lights and sirens? Yes. Okay. Um, and so you were employed as a patrol officer back on March 15th of 2023? Yes. In case anyone's wondering why does he have to describe absolutely everything to do with his uniform, what the defense attorney, sorry, the prosecution is establishing is there is no way that anyone could mistake him for anything else apart from a law enforcement officer. It advertises it on the uniform, the car, absolutely everything. So there's no chance that the defense can go, well, he didn't know he was actually law enforcement. He's, she's just eliminated the possibility of that happening. That's why they go through these things methodically. Uh, it sounds stupid and it sounds pretty fucking, oh, you're just covering the, you know, the fucking basics or the obvious. Well, yeah, that way there's no, no chance that the defense can go, well, you know, he fucking was in a privately marked car with bloody you know, a sweatshirt on. Well, no, he was in a uniform in a marked patrol vehicle identifying himself as law enforcement. So there's no argument now. Um, at some point in time, um, did you conduct a traffic stop um, while you were working in that capacity? Yes, I did. On that date? Yes. Okay. And was that for a vehicle um, bearing license plate 748Z? Like zebra, two like zombie, like. Four. And yes, she is too. Painting, painting the same. Why did you stop that vehicle? I had conducted a DMV records check on that oh. license plate, and it came back expired and suspended. Thank you. And where is it that you stopped that vehicle? It was uh, forty-one fifty-five South Grand Canyon, which was near Target. Okay. Um, is that over on Flamingo Grand Canyon? Yes. Okay, and that's here in Las Vegas, Clark County, Nevada, sir. Yes. And um, you indicated it was for uh, a license plate that was expired and suspended? Yes. Um, so when you initiated the traffic stop, um, what did you do or how did you do that? I approached the driver, let her know the reason for the stop, and obtained her uh, identifying information, registration okay. insurance. Okay. Um, and I forgot to ask you earlier, but pursuant to um, your uniform and as a patrol officer, are you equipped with a body-worn camera? Yes, I am. Okay. And do you also have a radio? Yes, I do. Okay. And are those items, both the body-worn camera and the radio, um, on your uniform today? Yes, they are. Okay. And is that how the body-worn camera and or the radio were on your uniform back on March 15th of 2023? Yes. Okay. And to your knowledge, was your body-worn camera functioning at that time? Yes, it was functioning. Okay. And so, uh, you made contact with the driver of that Hyundai? Yes, I did. Um, would you, how would you characterize um, the nature of your encounter or the, um, yeah, the nature of your encounter with that driver? Uh, she was cooperative with me. I explained the reason for the stop. Uh, she seemed confused, you know, not sure exactly how it had become suspended. Uh, but she was friendly and cooperative. Okay, she identified herself. She did. She had a picture of her license on her phone. Okay. And at some point, sir, um, did you go back to your patrol vehicle uh, to further your investigation? I did. And as you were, well, let me ask you this. Um, when you effectuated the traffic stop on this vehicle, where did you park or stop your vehicle in relation to the hundred that you were stopping? I uh, parked approximately 10, 15 feet behind the stop vehicle. We ended up in a parking lot. Okay. And was the driver the sole occupant of the vehicle? Yes. Okay. And so 
when you returned to your patrol vehicle to conduct your further investigation, um, was the driver within eyesight? Yes, she was. Okay. And is it is it your habit and custom and also your training to keep the individual that you are you know dealing with within eyesight? Yes. And so at some point while you were still in your vehicle, in your patrol vehicle, um, did something occur that caused me to have to testify before Judge Zimmerman today? Yes, I had uh, an unrelated person come over to start recording the traffic stop. Okay. And um, we talked about your body-worn camera previously, but did you activate your body-worn camera prior to the traffic stop? Yes, I did. Okay. Or, you know, just before you initiated the traffic stop? I initiated the stop and then I immediately activated my camera. Okay. And how is it that body-worn camera is activated on your uniform, sir? I have a battery pack that's on my belt in the front, and I press the activation button, which is in the front. Okay. And so is it, is it just a tap of, of that activation button? It's a double hey, tap on the front, yes. Okay. And how is it that you would stop recording? I would hold down that same power button. Okay. Um, or it can be turned off. There's a toggle switch on the top that slides on and off. Okay. That'd be turned um, off the second Chili got anywhere near me. And so you, the, your body-worn camera was running as of, you know, the stop, the traffic stop being initiated. Yes. Okay. And so you described an um, unrelated individual um, coming over to, you know, your, your stop. Yes. Okay. Can you describe this individual? He was a white male adult. He was wearing a uh, bright colored hoodie and blue jeans. Okay. Um, that individual, do you see him here in court today? Yeah, it's that dumb fuck over there. You see him? That dumb fuck with the glasses? That dumb fuck. Right there. See? Can, it, can everyone see him? Everyone fucking look. Everyone point at him. This guy. This dumb fuck. Have a look at this silly billy stupid face. This dumb fuck right here. That's not what he says, obviously, I guess. Because <laughs> it would be fucking awesome if he did. Can you please point to him and describe something he's wearing? He's wearing a suit and a blue tie. Your Honor, please let the record reflect identification of the defendant. So ordered. And so, what do you do upon seeing this individual approach um, the driver of the vehicle you had stopped? Initially, when I saw him, he was just recording. And I ignored him, continued my records check. Then, when he came over to the driver and started speaking to them, I got out of the car, approached the driver, and told the passenger to back up. Okay. When you first um, noticed, um, so you, you identified the un, unknown uh, or unrelated male subsequently, correct? Yes. And what was his name? Jose De Castro. Okay. Um, and that's the individual you just, you identified here in court? Yes. Okay. And so when you first laid eyes on the defendant, approximately how far away was he from, um, the driver of the vehicle in the Hyundai? Not fucking far enough. He should have been in a completely different fucking state. But the fact that he was in Nevada, now I have to deal with this bullshit. That's how close we're talking. Approximately somewhere within five to ten feet. Okay. And that as, works too. And you indicated that he was recording? Yes. Okay. What did you see that led you to believe he was recording? He had his uh, cell phone camera pointed directly at me. Okay. Um... And so, is that when, upon seeing him being that close to the driver, is that when you told him, you walked up to the driver of the stopped vehicle and asked Mr. DeCastro to back up? Yes, once he started talking with the driver. Okay. And why is it that you did that, officer? Well, I can't have unrelated people uh, next to my traffic stops. I don't know if he's a dangerous person, armed. He could be a boyfriend of the stopped person. It's for my safety and the safety of the person I've stopped. Okay. Because you're also in charge of the safety of the individual that this unrelated individual is making contact with. Is that fair to say? Yes. Okay. Um, and so you saw it as an officer safety issue as well as a safety issue for the driver. Yes. Okay. And so when you approached, well, you said he was recording, the defendant was recording. At any time, did you tell him to stop recording? No. In fact, I told him he can continue recording. Okay. Um, he can continue to record given what? So as long as he backed up and gave him an appropriate distance to work. Okay. And, and so when you asked the defendant to back up, did he follow your order? No, he did not. Um, and so what did you do next? 
I gave him three additional warnings to back up. Okay, and did he um, obey those orders? No, he did not. Ah, oh, that's why you and should what start did opening fire. What did you do with the pat with the driver of the stock vehicle, the Hyundai? At that point, I chose to release the driver of the Hyundai and then focus my attention on Jose to, Jose to Castro. Okay. Um, and for the record, officer, at that point in time, were you the only uniformed officer, the only officer um, present at the scene? Yes, ma'am. And so at this point, you were dealing with the stock driver as well as an unrelated individual and having to make contact or maintain visual of both. Yes. And at that point, the defendant was not being cooperative. Correct, yes. Okay. So you release the driver of the Hyundai. <laughs> what do you tell that person to let her go? Get I just uh, said that she was free to go, simply. And subsequently, did you turn your attention on the defendant? Yes. And can you tell Judge Zimmerman the nature of your interaction with the defendant um, after that? I ordered the Castro to the front of my patrol vehicle while pointing at it and told him that he was detained. And what was the purpose of detaining him? For obstructing my initial traffic stop at the Hyundai. Okay. And did he obey your lawful order? No, um, he did not. Okay. And no matter what? <laughs> um, <laughs> did anyone hear that? Then you can hear you can hear Chili whisper, I object. Yeah, that's not your fucking job, mate. <laughs> Let's just go back half a second. You'll hear him. He just whispers quietly into the microphone. Okay. So you release the driver of the Hyundai. What do you tell that person to let her go? I just uh, said that she was free to go, simply. And subsequently, did you turn your attention on the defendant? Yes. And can you tell Judge Zimmerman the nature of your interaction with the defendant um, after that? I ordered the Castro to the front of my patrol vehicle while pointing at it and told him that he was detained. Okay. And what was the purpose of detaining him? For obstructing my initial traffic stop at the Hyundai. Okay. And did he obey your lawful order? No, um, he did not. Yeah. Did you hear it? Just then. I object. G'day, German Shepherd. Uh, I did just post a link in the uh, in the uh, live chat there. That's the link to his uh, his current mugshot in uh, Las Vegas prison. Oh, Las Vegas jail. So there you go. What? Uh, what happened next? We uh, he continued filming me. I continued pointing toward my patrol vehicle. Continued telling him he was detained. Um, all the while, he just continued shifting his body around, recording me on the phone and refusing to go to the car. Okay, so what did you do in response? I uh, used my hand to escort him to the patrol vehicle. So I placed my hand on his shoulder and at that point he swatted my hand away. And what happened next? That's when I grabbed him by the shirt and I spun him around and then we ended up at the front of my patrol vehicle while still standing. At some point did you request additional units to respond to the scene? I did, that was before I grabbed him. Okay. When I initially detained him. Okay. And um, I'm sorry, uh, once you had him at your patrol vehicle, or the front, um, the hood of your patrol vehicle, what, what happened next? Uh, officer Dingley, another officer in the area, had arrived and he came over to help me handcuff him. Okay. And were you successful or did the defendant cooperate in being handcuffed? The other way to ask that question that the uh, the district attorney saying there, and I'll, I'll break it down easily. Uh, this is probably for all you aspiring attorneys out there. Instead of asking, did he comply and so forth when you were being handcuffed, all you need to ask very simply is, did he fuck around and find out? He did not cooperate. Um, I told him seven times to face my patrol vehicle. He did not listen. I told him six times to turn around. He did not listen. It, was, it wasn't until I told him that he was going to go to jail that was the consequence of not listening that he allowed us to handcuff. Okay. And um, after he was handcuffed, but well, well, when he was handcuffed, was it just you and Officer Dingle present? Yes. Okay. It's a great name um, for an officer, Officer Dingle. Once he was Dingle. handcuffed, what if anything um, happened next? He continued to argue with my partners, Officer Dingle and some other officers that were starting to show up. Mm -hmm. And then I focused... Um, my roles in completing the report and calling the sergeant because he requested a supervisor. Okay. Um, and at some point, <laughs> was he um, arrested for 
um, account of obstructing a public officer. Yes. And also for resisting a, a public officer or resisting arrest. Yes. And was he? Um, Did he crawl like a bitch? Point in time, <laughs> um, during your interaction with him, or your Did he crawl like a bitch? Interaction with other officers. Did he cooperate with um, any of the officers present at the scene? No, he kept shifting around, and normally we have people stand still in front of our car, and I could hear him arguing with the other officers. Did you flop it out? Did he flop it out? Did any of you flop it out? I've got it flopped out. You indicated you had your body-worn camera turned on um, at this time. Yes. Did you flop it out then? <laughs> Did you have an opportunity to look at your body-worn camera prior to court today? Yes, I did. Okay. Uh, yeah, I got that uh, shit on replay in the station. Like, we watch it every day and laugh. <laughs> and, Your Honor, we're going to be screen sharing through Zoom. He cried like a big bitch. That's right. <laughs> That's right, Sentry. Absolutely, he did. <laughs> This is the fun thing a lot of people don't know about law enforcement. They're also here in Australia. You can refer to your notes. You can refer to video and stuff to refresh your memory before the case. Uh, obviously, everyone can do that. Defendants, whoever the witness is, you know, every, anyone that has access to discovery is allowed to, to go over the footage or read the notes, etc. If the, if the officer wanted to, he could bring out his notebook and start flipping through the notebook with the notes that he made on the day. Okay. Um. Officer, are you able to see? There's not a screen over there, so I might have to bring mine over to you um, with the court's permission. Okay. <coughs> oh, Jesus Christ, mate. Cough it up. <laughs> She's got big tits, hasn't she? Oh, look at that. Look at that little ass on that thing. It's, okay. it's criminal. Uh, officer, <laughs> I'm showing you uh, my computer screen. Um, is it fair to say that what's being shared on the screen as well as what's showing up on my computer screen um, is are two files. Home uh, video. <laughs> one labeled 416B.mp4, the other one labeled 468, um, number sign 1.mp4. And then there's this nude photo for the captain. Right I am just going to. Can you see that? <laughs> and for the record, Your Honor, all body worn camera footage have been um, disclosed to the defense well in advance of today's trial. Five times you've watched this today, Daryl. And you're you're watching it again. Snippet um, of um, the one labeled 468 um, underscore number sign one. Dot yes, correct, uh, Griffey. Do you recognize what's depicted here? Yes, this is the initial Hyundai that I had stopped. Was traffic stop. Okay. And so do you recognize this particular file um, as the body-worn camera of your interaction? Oh, there you go. Um, first oh, we need to talk, Mr. Griffey. The defendant on March 15th of 2023. Yes. Okay. And does this oh, show the, five years the corrections. time that you activated your camera? Yes. Okay. It, similar to what you testified to uh, earlier? Yes. Okay. Um, and you've had an opportunity to see this entire mm -hmm. like, uh, 12 and a half minute long video, is that right? Yes. Does it fairly and accurately depict um, the traffic stop and also your interaction oh, with the defendant on the date? You make me feel warm inside, Daryl. Yes. At the location that we've been discussing. Yes. Okay, Your Honor, I move to admit and subsequently publish um, the file label 468 underscore number sign 1.mp4. So that's. I have no objection. Sweet, man. That'd be awesome. Admitted and published. Thank you. Why don't you email them the, uh, the photos of me and Natalie Portman going to town on one another like we was trapped in a cyclone? It was fucking a good afternoon, that. And Anne Hathaway lives just over here. She fucking heard us so, like, vigorously fucking, she had to have a cigarette. And then she joined us. I should probably point that out, too. She feels a bit left out sometimes. You guys like my new studio while we're filling in time? Thanks for the warning, Griffey. <laughs> yeah, take the shit off. Permission to just put it up there.
Shankies. Oh, Miss Hathaway is the best banger. <laughs> I, I swam to the bottom of the ocean to get that photo, mate. <laughs> Oh, did you order a Mr. Sparky t-shirt, D-Man? Heck, was that? Okay, so primarily we're going to look at him in the, the body camera, having a chat to the whole interaction. Should we skip ahead from the body camera, or should we see how this goes? Because I have no idea how this runs. There's obviously a lot of bad fucking sounds. Jesus. Goes for twelve minutes. Jesus. I appreciate you be watching it again with us. All right, so we'll skip ahead a little bit from the the traffic stop, and this is the arrest. We've all we've all seen the videos of uh, of Chili being arrested and stuff. So we'll skip ahead to she's gone back here. We we'll have a chat with the cop. All right, so he's... And uh, could you just point to where he is in the um, um, in the video on my screen? Yes. Okay, he's, he's this dumb fuck right there. And let the record reflect he identified um, a male big tubby fuck with, with glasses right there. That guy. Um, towards the middle of the screen. And is this the individual that you um, have been talking about, the defendant, here today? Yes. Okay. Well, that's the car coming to pick up Chili. Look at that. Uber, Uber drivers are turning up <coughs> taxi to jail. There he is. There's a dumb fuck. Yeah, you're right, mate. So one's in pretty well in this in this video, and if you haven't seen Chili's arrest video, a lot of awesome channels like Welsh News Network, etc., uh, have covered this arrest video quite in, in depth. This video came out before I had a chance to uh, to have a play on it, and by that time it was a bit late to go backwards. Um, but it primarily, exactly as the officer states, he told him to fucking shut up and you know, get the back of the patrol car and all that sort of stuff, and he fails to do so. And this is pretty much the arrest. <laughs> oh, I love. He's almost going. F what would you call that, Griffy? He's almost. I know it's a small sort of joint restraint, but it almost looks like he's going to go full gooseneck there, but he never did. No, I bet he's not. I think Chili's got a bit of a sore bum bum about now. Yeah. That concludes um, the um, yeah, 12 minute and 31 second video. Um, the video marks um, 468 underscore number sign one dot mp4. Um, officer, at some point um, after this interaction that we just saw, did you come to realize that your body worn camera had hey, that connections. inadvertently turned off? Yes. Okay. And um, at what point in time did it turn off? It would have turned off at uh, the completion of the video that we just saw. Just saw, 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 saw. Prior, prior. Is she, is she, 
<laughs> she went to the long stream as well. <laughs> okay. Um, did you at some, we know this officer Dingle show up to the scene though? Yes. Okay. And do you know whether he had his body worn camera turned on? Yes, it was activated. Okay. And so what was, what would have been missed by the inadvertent um, turning off of your body worn camera would have been captured on officer Dingle's uh, body worn camera? Yes. Okay. And did I um, allow you to look at um, that video footage um, from Officer Dingle uh, this morning prior to testifying here today? Yes, you did. That is and the best nine. did you Officer have an Dingle. opportunity to look at it to determine whether it was, in fact, the video um, related to this event? Yes, I looked at it and it was the video related. Okay. And so, um, and then turn your attention now to the video labeled 416 d Have a look at the lashes on uh, on Madame Lash here. Like, I love her, for starters. She's an extremely intelligent defense, uh, uh, sorry, uh, prosecution. Um, but fuck, look at those lashes. Jesus. Dash, or dot MP4. And I'm just going to... says 4168. Oh, I'm sorry. Is that these? What do you mean? 416B? Oh, no, MP4? Okay. Or 8. Um, and, okay, I just played the first 13 seconds, um, but actually I'm going to fast forward. Now, for the record, the video is upside down. It recorded upside down. Yes? Yes, it did. So, uh, what are you doing after this? I'm up for whatever. Uh, Ma'am, there's a setting in the application <laughs> where you can rotate it. This officer may not have checked that beforehand. Okay. Um, stopping or starting at 4.54 um, timestamp on the video that we've been talking about. Um, do you recognize what's depicted at least in the still portion? <laughs> still yes, this is uh, me and DeCastro in front of my patrol vehicle. Okay. Uh, I think it's De Castro. So, and I. to your knowledge, <laughs> after having watched this, does this fairly accurately depict um, your interaction with the defendant um, on March fifteenth of two thousand and twenty-three, as caught? Do you know the funny thing is, I actually have big lashes for a fella, and um, they her her lashes, Madam Lashes lashes, phew, back it out on camera. By Officer Dingley. Uh, <laughs> Prosecute me. Yes. Please. Who to admit 416 B or 8? Okay. No objection. You know if it's an 8 or a B for sure? It looks like a B too. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I lose. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, 416 B dot MP4 will be admitted and published. Thank you. And I'm just going to start from 454. Um, Which is exotic photos of me and so. Can we move the water bottle so you can see it too? Of course. Thank you. Judy, come on. You can Thank you. No, nah, they look pretty natural. Is there any way to rotate it so it's right tied up? Nope. Can you scratch it? There you go. Anyone can see a Skype name or? <laughs> Why does he sh his jacket? Do you remember back in the eighties, the old parachute material? Like he's like he's wearing an old um, you know Hornets jacket or something there. <laughs> Like, like every fucker had in the 80s. It just kind of looks like that, doesn't it? Like he, his parent, like he got his clothes from Goodwill. There's there's no doubt in that. Like the guy can't even raise, uh, raise enough money to, you know, cover a you know a packet of cigarettes, let alone fucking a decent set of clothing. Like even the suit he's wearing at the moment looks like someone was buried in it before he got it. Ivan, good morning, welcome. And also, if you are watching this on replay, like you're watching this after the live, thanks for sticking it out, because it is a long video. So... Yeah, 
yeah, shell suit. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Parachute pants. Doing the MC Hammer. <laughs> yeah, 20 odd years ago. You smell like longer than that. 20 years ago was 2000. And four. <laughs> we'll be e-begging for Vaseline very soon. Wonder if you can just send. We should send. Oh, let's all send him mail. They get mail. Let's all send him letters of, and just photos of our assholes. <laughs> I mean, Betty fucking does. Ah, uh, I V, I love you, man. You're a good boy. A good man, I should say. Boy, you're a good boy. Good man. Now, can you show us the video of the body-worn camera of Bubba when he gets back to the cell? Because I reckon we could put that on OnlyFans for a couple of bucks, and all of his fucking cult members will probably watch it just to see what his arsehole looks like, because they've been kissing it for long enough that now they finally get to see it on the big screen. They'll be pulling their little pods, having a fucking great old time, jacking it off to Chili's little arsehole. Probably looks like a cat blowing a kiss. Yeah, there's no buyout for him, mate. <laughs> Clock with no hands. <laughs> hey, Chili, do you like clocks? Because you can whack two hands and a face on this, baby. <laughs> It's at this moment, Chili realised that he fucked around and found out. You're gonna get sued. How did that go for you? Oh, language. You kiss your daughter with that mouth? gonna let go of the cuff. Are you that fucking retarded? <sighs> Look what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, I, I know that this video camera has been released to the public and stuff. I know, I'll tell you what we need to do is get hold of the footage and uh, we can all get together in one big cinema, sit down in the cinema, everyone gets a popcorn and a chop top and we'll fucking watch him squeal like a little piggy as Bubba's finger goes inside him to check what his tonsils feel like. Jose! Jose, 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 Jose. <laughs> That's what they're going to be screaming. Jesus loves you means something completely different in prison, mate. paying for his lawyer d -man. I'm not 100% sure. I'm sure someone out there smarter than I am will know the answer to that. Yeah, better call Sol's actually, you know, back and good watching. <laughs> up if you need to go to the toilet by the way because I can pause it while everyone goes wee wee's.
<laughs> How fucking year I am. <laughs> you forgot sick. I'm very, very sick. People wonder how sick I can go. Well, this is how sick I, I can... You know, I, 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 let's step it slowly up the ranks of how bad I can get. Do you think in Chile's adult life he has successfully brought a goat to climax? Because I reckon he has. A male a male goat, not, not a female goat, because there's no feminine thing on the planet that he could bring to climax, but a male goat, I reckon he has jerked to completion. Kind of one. <laughs> like you know, he's not allowed around a petting zoo anymore. Okay, I'm gonna stop it at eleven thirty-five. Yeah, probably. No, dogs are a bit harder so to get. So, officer, <laughs> um, did the body-worn camera uh, portions that we played? Um, or that I played, fairly and accurately depict um, your interaction with the defendant on March 15th of 2023. Yes, it did. Um, concerning... Um, I didn't say it was consensual. <laughs> a little bit about what was depicted in the video. In the video from your body-worn camera, it shows, you know, the, the state of your stop with uh, the Hyundai driver. Do you recall that? Yes. Okay. And at some point prior to you making contact with the defendant, you noticed him kind of recording further away from the vehicle, correct? Yes, yes. And at that point yes. in time, you didn't have a problem with that. You didn't really approach the defendant yet, correct? Correct. It was when he started making contact with the driver, your stopped uh, driver, um, that you approached him and asked him to back up. Yes. And at some point in time in the video, it was recorded, you told him that he is allowed to record, but he just needed to back up. Yes. Okay. And what was the reason for you trying to maintain, one, the lack of uh, no contact with the stop hey, person, sorry, how are you? and two, um, hey, God, trying to gain please. distance between the defendant, yourself, and the stop driver? My first intention is I wasn't trying to delay my traffic stop any longer than it had to be. I was trying to make it as short as possible for the driver. And then the second was for officer safety. What we're taught in the academy is that uh, for a normal human's reaction time with open ground, anything within 21 feet, um, that suspect would be able to charge an officer without them being able to react in time. All right. And at that point in time, you were the only officer present, correct? Yes. Okay. And when he began, or when the defendant um, failed to obey your command to back up, that's when you decided to engage him? Yes. Okay. Um. This poor officer has been taken off bloody the rotation to have to sit here and fucking just give evidence on a complete and utter fucking waste of bloody functioning kidneys. I'm surprised Chile hasn't jumped up saying I know more than him because I'm a constitutional law scholar. And he's just a pig. Good morning, officer. How are you, Rick? Morning, there we go, defense well, team. Very well. Um, how many feet did you order the defendant to back up specific, specifically? I never had an opportunity to give him an exact distance. How far back did you intend to have him back up even if you didn't express that? In the background of the video, you can see that there was a parked semi-truck and a light pole. I would have directed him somewhere in that area, which would have been outside the 21 feet. Your testimony is you never told him an exact distance to back up, correct? This defense attorney, oh sorry, the, uh, yeah, the defense attorney, he's given fucking Blokes with square jaws and glasses of fucking bad name, isn't he? Have a look at that. This looks like my fucking twin that dead set was molested by an uncle. All right, we don't talk about him anymore. He went to America and last I heard he was defending them fuckheads. Yes, he never allowed me to. What do you mean he never allowed you to? I asked him to back up and he continued to argue with me so I could never specify exact distance for him. But you had time to give him 
by Commander Looks like Dana Angel. Right? Yes. Jacob's Your testimony is he never backed up when you were giving him commands. Is that correct? If he backed up, it may have been inches, but he didn't substantially back up. And you just reviewed the uh, body worn camera from your, your chest, is that correct? Yes. Okay. You didn't you notice him to... backing up every time you uh, directed him to back up? He did not back up. So you backed up zero feet, in your opinion? It's not video? Not zero feet. What was that? He didn't back up zero feet. He was moving his feet. As to exactly how far he moved back, I don't know. But it wasn't substantial. Oh. What you... would have been substantial, in your opinion? Oh. Did, did the defense attorney not watch the video beforehand? Or not seen any information whatsoever pertaining to the case? Because one, if he did, that's pretty fucking funny. <laughs> and two, that's just not how a lawyer is supposed to work. What do you mean by that? I would have guided him if he wasn't arguing with me back toward the light pole in the park semi-truck. And would have, again, would have been outside of the 21 feet. That was so, my goal. So in your opinion, you have... Look at this photo of the defense attorney and you tell me that that guy is not currently watching the camera operator masturbate while he was taking this photo. Look at him. That is the eyes of someone watching someone else pleasure themselves. The ability, or you would in any traffic stop, ask somebody to look back 21 feet, is that correct? That sounds about right. Yes, for our training. And what was that training? That uh, while we're conducting lawful activity, we're allowed a reasonable distance to conduct our activity but where do you get that 21 feet number from specifically? That's taught to us in the academy. It's based on reaction time, normal human reaction time to a threat. Mm -hmm. Oh. So your position is anytime you're engaged in any law enforcement activity, you would create a 21 feet perimeter? Not necessarily. It depends on other environmental factors such as obstacles and barriers. So your testimony is that every time you conduct a traffic stop, as long as there's no barriers, you would order a pedestrian to back up 21 feet. Is that correct? I would. You have asked the same question three different ways. That's bad loitering, right? That is straight out bad. You're not listening. You're trying to catch him out on something and he's not giving you the fucking the chance to do it. But you've asked the same question about a 21 foot gap between someone and the officer, which he has stated as part of the academy training, how, how, how much, do you want him to fucking write it down? Do you want someone that can understand how, you know, this shit works, explain it to you? Maybe ask your client. Maybe it's in the trifold or something. Yes. Okay. What training do you have in regards to the First Amendment? It's standard academy training. Can you explain what that entails? Usually includes a classroom setting, uh, PowerPoint taught by police officer, uh, academy officer. Do you remember receiving that training specifically? Yes. Well, yeah. Otherwise, it wouldn't. How long ago was that? No, I was first employed about eight years ago. Do you have any follow-up training? Specifically on First Amendment, we've had some follow-up training uh, regarding. First Amendment auditors. Okay, can you explain what that follow-up training was? The follow-up training was just uh, a refresher on the First Amendment. How not to shoot them? <laughs> how the department wants to handle or react to First Amendment auditors. In that training, did they explain any case law governing how many feet somebody has to move back or anything like that? Objection, Your Honor, at this point uh, of relevance. I think it's beyond the scope of you know, the charges that you are to determine guilt um, on at this time. Oh, fucking Can you tell me what's the relevance? Yes, Your Honor. Um, he detained the defendant after issuing commands back up a particular distance. He's testified he's received training. Um, I should be entitled to cross-examine him about what that training is and how he's coming up with uh, the specific numbers he's using to... to I think her objection was with respect to the case law that you're inquiring about. Yeah, and relevance. 
Your Honor, our position is if he is issuing commands that are contrary to that case law and he's been uh, trained on that case law, then there can't be an obstruction of justice. Well, there is. That's why he was charged with it. Do, did you not read the reports? I know that you're a fucking stupid lawyer, but, dude, if you're going to look similar to me, like if I was a sex offender and that's what I would have no choice but to look like, at least show some dignity to the look, man. Jesus. I, will. I think we might stop for just two minutes. I need to do a wee wee. So if anyone else needs to go to the toilet, now's the time. Do it right now because we'll be back literally in about two minutes. So I'm just going to switch screens for a second.
There we go. Turn the mic back on. Thank you very much for waiting, ladies and gentlemen. I do apologise, but my teeth were turning yellow and my eyes were starting to black out. That bloody toilet water, I tell you. It's cold. A bit deep. All right, let's jump back in and see where we're up to. Obviously, Officer uh, No Fucks Given is on the stand covering uh, what happened. So, let's see how it goes. So, I'm going to sustain the objection and ask you to move along. Yeah, fucking move on. Have you had any prior issues um, enforcing the First Amendment? No. Um, prior to this event taking place, had you heard of Jose de Castro? No. G'day, Christopher. Do you recall when you first heard about the First Amendment waters specifically? Yeah, the chief went, there's a bunch of fuckheads running out again. So that was when you were first trained? You, you had heard about the orders back then? Yes, when we were learning about the First Amendment, they would typically bring up uh, issues that might be a frequently seen thing. And First Amendment auditors are, are typically the ones that we encounter when there's First Amendment claims against us. Do you have any belief that First Amendment auditors are likely to be violent? Objection, relevant. Yeah, I agree. Right. I'm only concerned with Mr. De Castro. Okay. Yep, fair call. Your Honor, um, one of the legal issues at question here is whether or not these commands are reasonable. I, I think that it has to be based upon his past experiences in training. I'm very, very thankful for the feedback, by the way, because like you, I had only seen small clips here, there, and everywhere, and I didn't want to just see a small clip. I wanted to see the whole thing, and at the same time, I had a, a great discussion with uh, with Kimotron and Wolf Queen here because my studio is in the middle of the lounge room, so it disturbs the house when I do a live stream a little bit. So big thank you to them for letting us do this because I wanted to see it as a whole video with everybody involved. So, but yeah, thank you very much for the feedback. Hey, Owen. Um, during this traffic stop in particular, <laughs> what specific factors uh, led you to believe there might be a, a danger to officer safety? Based on his proximity to my driver, based on his demeanor being argumentative, based on his physical demeanor, his veins were popping out of his neck as he was yelling at me. <laughs> Frankenstein will do that. You can see his veins popping out of his neck from your back where your vehicle is. When I was at the driver's side window, I could see that, but not in my car. So when you see him walking out from, from your car, what is your specific concern regarding officer safety at that point in time? Well, it's, it's my safety hey. and the safety of the driver. I don't know who this person is. I've never met him before. He could be peaceful, he could be violent, I just don't know. There's so many unknown factors. And I also have a responsibility to protect that driver. If I and even though this officer doesn't know who fucking Chili de Castro is currently, watch Chili's channel. There's multiple threats to law enforcement on his channel where he carries a gun and he's going to fucking kill them and all pigs should be killed and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, the officer knows these type of people are out there and he doesn't want some fucking psychopath jamming a dildo up his bum when he's trying to deal with a fucking traffic stop. Who knows what Chili is capable of? He, the officer might have thought that Chili was going to pull down his pants and finish him to completion and he didn't want to particularly ejaculate in a traffic stop. That's more of a back in the station thing with your mates. If I were in that driver's position, I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't want to be approached by some random person recording me, interviewing me. Did you ever ask the driver their opinion about whether they wanted him there or not? No, my Is first step was... Good turnout tonight, ladies and gentlemen. This is great, thank you. <laughs> was your primary concern him speaking to the driver or him not backing up a little? My primary concern was safety. I don't know if he was armed or what his intention was. <laughs> Do you presume someone is armed and dangerous just because they're in public? Yes. I can't rule out that he's 
unarmed. Like every police officer should. Consider everyone okay, armed until armed. proven otherwise. Okay. No, nobody had told me he was armed and I didn't see any weapons visible, but he was wearing clothing that could have easily concealed weapons. Yeah, spot on. Like, so when you first came upon the scene, you were um, in your vehicle uh, typing on your computer, is that correct? Yes. And what were you doing uh, in relation to that traffic stop at that point in time? Conducting a background check to Zazu, see if hello, Mike. Uh, her license was valid, to see if she had any criminal history to help me make my decision whether to warn her or issue citation. You stated your belief that the driver was entitled to privacy? I did say that. And, and what do you mean by that? Instead of continuing to give him commands to back up, I said something different. Tell him it. Can uh, I, Mike? To try and help him understand. She, she's really not entitled to privacy, but she's entitled to safety. Hmm. So your explanation is that you said that because you were just trying to convince him to back up, not because you believed? Yes, if I continue to give the command to back up and he's not listening, I can't expect something different to happen if I just keep saying back up. Ask, tell, Mike. In your police report, um, do you recall referencing the fact that he had due notice in your opinion of what you were planning to do? Yes, when I gave him four commands to back up those due notice. But you'll agree with me that he did not have notice as to the distance you wanted him to back up. Is that correct? That's correct. Back to fucking distance again. Approximately how long uh, were you issuing these commands to him before you decided to take it to the bed? Um, <laughs> approximately 15, 20 seconds. And your testimony is you didn't have any time during that entire back and forth to tell him a specific distance to back up to? Not time, but no opportunity. Can I sign a Robin? How so? Well, every time I tried to speak with him, he would argue he wasn't listening at all. So. And let us not forget, you know, Chili's, you know, he's an MMA fucking cage fighter that served on the Samurai Bloody Army during World War fucking Nine, uh, and he was trained by Lord Zeno of fucking Krypton. So you know, I'm kind of with the officer here. Like, you know, who fucking knows what this guy's capable of? He's a highly trained fucking, uh, you know, samurai ninja, MMA, cage fighting, wrestling champion. So if he's not understanding back up, how would he explain something that was more complex? Well, what was preventing you from saying back up to a particular location? Time. First, I would want him to back up, and then if he didn't back up far enough, I would give him an exact location. But you never did, correct? No, I never did. Which you've established seven times now. Did the defendant's verbal comments towards you influence what you decided to do that day? No. On the video, did you see that um, the point in time you decided to detain him was uh, specifically after he made an insulting comment towards you? Um, it, that wasn't why I chose to detain him. I realized that he wasn't going to back up at that time. His comments didn't make you angry at him? No. Coppers, big, big news here. Coppers get caught a lot fucking worse by a lot better people. In, in your um, review of the video just now, you had both hands in front of him the entire time. Is that correct? Holy shit, there's 50 of you watching. Hello, everybody. No, at one point he reaches uh, toward his back pocket to pull out his second phone. Um, did you quickly see that it was a second phone he was going for? Yes. Okay. So once you see him produce the second phone in his hands, uh, he's obviously not reaching for Mike the Mike Minton, it's my Hello. At that time, no, he wasn't. What time of day did this occur at? If I remember correctly, I think it was around 4.30 in the afternoon. And this was in a broad Yes, public. very, very true, yes. Anthony. They certainly do. Does the fact that this occurred um, in broad daylight in public 
influence your, your decision making as far as these treatment demands to the defendant? Uh, it could. In this particular case, it didn't. Why don't you just ask me if it was wind was speed direction us, fucking an issue? Other than me and the driver and De Castro. What about the, the temperature of the road surface? Did that fucking factor into, you know, the what sort of underpants you wore to work on that uh, day? Just about as relevant. Your testimony today? Yes, that's the best way I can describe it. Um, and you saw his arm do this, or you just felt it? I saw it and felt it. And he's... Um, do you recall in your police report uh, stating that you did not believe his intent was to harm you? Yes, I wrote that. Okay. And what is your basis for um, reaching that conclusion? Well, he could have been charged with battery on a police officer, which would have been more severe. But I wasn't... I didn't think his intent was to hurt me, so I didn't charge him with that. It's very cool. Uh, you testified today that one of the things you were concerned about was him not going over to your vehicle. Is that true? Yes. Will you agree with me that he actually did walk over to your vehicle at some point during the interaction? Yes, but it wasn't reasonable the amount of time it took him. I'm, I'm coming to shit with him. Asking him to step in front of my car and then doing so immediately. And how fast is it immediately? This isn't based off of time, my response. It's just based off of interaction. Oh. Uh, I, had to, I had to tell him he was detained multiple times. And I made it clear what he was detained for. Thank you, I he said he was detained for obstructing. And I gave him several commands to step in front of my car. So I, I would think a reasonable person would walk over to my car, and then we'd have a conversation there. Because, get this. And how specifically did his presence. The streets aren't called right. traffic stop? Again, I don't know what his intention is. I don't know if he's armed. All I saw was him recording, which and I had no issue with. I told him I had no issue with. At some point in time, if I were to issue a citation to the driver, my focus would be on the driver and what's inside her car. At that point, I hadn't pulled her out. I hadn't pat her down. I don't know if she has any weapons in the car or what her intent was, if there was anything underlying. So my intention on having to cast her back up was so that I didn't have split attention. He was too close for me to have split attention. Sounds pretty justified to me. He's lucky, but he, he didn't need cat fucking chili. Now, getting that close to your traffic stop, unknowing what his intentions are. I've... So what are the things you stated that you were uh, concerned about, I guess, from a safety point of view, was that he didn't identify himself? Is that true? No, I didn't care about his identity until I had him detained. Okay. Yeah. It's amazing how that works, isn't it? Unless he's fucking breaking um, the law, I don't give a fuck about him. But since he broke the law... I guess, detention of the event, did you pat him down to determine he didn't have any weapons? I did. Okay, and when was that during the uh, duration of the interaction? That was immediately after handcuffing. Okay, did you discover any weapons on him? No, I did not. From your police car, while he's walking up, you can essentially have a complete view of his movements and what he's doing at that point in time. Yes. And you never saw him uh, during that time period before you uh, got out of your car and reached for any weapons or anything like that? No. So, relevance. Oh, because he wasn't displaying a weapon at the time doesn't mean he's not a fucking threat. I just remember, okay? Well, if you're going to shoot a cop, around show him first. Other than like, the defendant and the driver? Got a gun right here. Gun remember. Is... Yeah, righto. <laughs> Do you recall anyone walking through the scene and asking about the restaurant next door? I don't remember that. But your testimony is if uh, there was someone else on the video, you would have been ordering that person to back up. All emojis will shoot across the screen. I would have first asked them to back up, and most people do. And then if they did not comply, then I'd give them a specific area to back up to. Your 
appropriate not to speak to the driver. Is that correct? Yes. Well, I remember asking to back up. I don't remember if I specifically asked him not to speak to the driver. I think I think I may have said don't talk to her or something to that effect. Did he speak to her before you got out of your patrol vehicle or afterwards? Before. I saw DeCastro filming. I stayed in my vehicle, continued my business. Then when I saw him speaking to the driver, that's when I exited. Did you <laughs> see him speak to the driver after you exited the vehicle at any point? I don't remember if he spoke to the driver after I exited. At any point, did you hear specifically what he may have said to the driver? No, I was too far away and it was going to be. Uh, is your position that any time you're engaged in a traffic stop, nobody can speak to the driver? They can speak to them at a reasonable distance. And is that 21 feet? It could be, it could be shorter, it could be longer. It, again, depends on the environment, totality, the circumstances. Do you think people can easily verbally communicate at 21 feet? No, not without shouting. <laughs> did at some point the defendant inform you that he was a member of the press? He did. Does that influence any of the orders you chose to give or not give the defendant? No, it doesn't matter. He's a member of the press the same way Macaulay Culkin is just a member of, you know, fucking Michael Jackson's phone history, you fucking idiot. Or a helicopter Why pilot. Why is it not? What is well, not a fucking idiot. Of that statement, Fuck Macaulay Culkin. Media, reporters, and standard citizens, they treat them all the same. So you becoming aware that somebody is a member of the press does not... Um, affect your uh, decision making in reference to your first amendment training also i want you to remember not overly long ago probably 10 years ago there was a reporter live on air when her fucking old cameraman or soundman turned up and opened fire and killed the cameraman and her so what does being a member of press have to do with fucking anything does someone think that a member of press can't pull out a weapon and start firing off shots because there's a lot of documented history of that. Uh, no, and how was I to know that he was a member of the press? Whenever I interact with members of the press, they usually identify what station they're with or a group that they're with. They usually have some sort of identification and badge. And we have good relationship with press out here. Hey, what, what the lawyer is trying to, to establish that if a building is on fire and, and is currently burning to the ground and the firefighters have set up a perimeter going, we need to fucking make sure this fire stays contained and everyone stays safe. Does that mean a member of press can identify themselves as a member of press and walk into the fucking flaming building? I'd love to see it. Like, don't get me wrong. If you want some good action shots, do it from inside. But... Does it sound like the smartest thing? Don't approach us the way that DeCastro did. Are you familiar with the difference between traditional press or um, independent media? Yes, but again, independent media would approach us more respectfully than DeCastro. Yep. Is your opinion that traditional media has different rights than new media, independent media? Objection, Your Honor. At this point, I think we're well beyond the scope of the Yep. Well played. <laughs> I thought you were an astronaut. Fucking hell. Is this yeah. guy actually a lawyer? Or is this one of Chili's mates that he's just... Your testimony is, uh, if, if I recall correctly, that he received First Amendment training. Um, oh, relevance. Through, Objection. Uh, Established. Officer training. Yes. And then you received one follow-up after that. 
I can't know, it was more than one. I don't know exactly how many. Uh, typically that training is annual. Again, relevance, and we've established this. Just to reiterate, this is the first Objection. time you experienced a First Amendment issue of this nature in, in your career. Objection, I believe I objected to that question um, when it was posed as a violent encounter and it was sustained. And I also objected on the grounds of relevance. Back could be an American lawyer. What we're concerned about is his interaction with the defendant specifically. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, it fucking so sure I, is. I object. Just I'm concerned about this interaction. Oh, yeah. Yeah, asked him, answered. Uh, you were called during your interactions with the defendant that you told him that you will. I honestly reckon if you guys in the States ever need a good set of lawyers and you can't afford the eight cents that Chile paid for this guy. Fucking give Griffey and I a call. We'll come and handle your case for you. We're fucking good at this. Leave to First Amendment law. Can I cliff? Often pull out guns and shoot people. I didn't say that they often do that. Do you recall what you said? I don't. I would have said that he was a stranger to me and that officers get ambushed all the time. Yeah, it could have been a First sense. Amendment auditor. It could have been a regular citizen. It could have been a cook from one of the places nearby. Could have been just a complete not a fuck it. That said that turned out to be correct. Auditors are at higher risk. What are you whispering to him, Chili? That you shit yourself? Tell him I'm a long fucking again, just to reiterate, uh, your testimony is that objection. I mean, any time it's purposed as just to reiterate, I feel like I should object on an ask and answer ground. Yeah, and I'm not. Just to, to hear it, but it just sounds like a reiteration of the question that I've previously asked. So my objection is ask and answer. Yep. You want to ask this question before I rule on your objection. Okay. Again, I'm just trying to clarify because I think this point was ambiguous. But do you recall the defendant telling you that he was a member of the press uh, during the interaction with the defendant? Ask and answer. Sustain. Boom. So what do you want me to say now, fuckhead? No further questions, Your Honor. No, thank of course, you. no further questions. Thank you, thank you officer. You may step down. <clears throat> In other words, oh, dude, why didn't you ask him about the trifold? Is the state rest? At this point, we do. Oh, the resting after one witness. That's beautiful. That's... Oh, okay, now we're All going right, to phase two. Oh, here we go. Here he comes, the man of the hour. With his fucking eight dollar haircut that he got probably from his mum. You solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, sir. Please be seated. Oh, he's got his Mr. paperwork. Castro, before you testify, I'm obligated to inform you that you have the right to testify in this proceeding, but you also have the right to remain silent. And should you choose to remain silent, I may not hold that against you in making my decisions. You understand that? I do. Do you still wish to testify? Yes, I do. Right, please go ahead. You have a YouTube channel? Yes, I do. Can you um, give some insight into what that channel is about? Objection, relevance. Oh, I love this this lady. I reckon we should put a couple of bucks together and send this girl some flowers because she is nailing it right now. Fucking first question out of the gate. <laughs> relevance and he hasn't got a fucking answer <laughs> yeah he's got a YouTube channel I've got a YouTube channel you know what that means in the courtroom nothing relevance. your honor the relevance is that we're presenting a first amendment defense and the difference <laughs> it's the vibe um, there's different standards for first amendment this is the vibe where there's public policy at issue um, he, he can give insight into that I couldn't comment on his hair, can I? Like, honestly, I had mine spiked like that. Maybe he saw me, and now he's just trying to do the captain look. Like, I've got it laid flat, but I normally have it spiked like that. But this is this is what happens when you put too much jizz in your hair. I'm going to allow it for a bit and see where it goes. Yep, all right. Yes, I do have a first. I, I do have a YouTube channel, and the reason I have a YouTube channel is because of how many cops kill people every year, how many cops hurt, maim, torture, rape, and kill people every single year. It's such an epidemic that the rest of the world 
I get thousands of emails saying, only in America does this happen. Well, don't bring it up in South Africa then, hey. Don't bring it up there. Don't bring it up in any of the third world countries where it happens quite regularly. And here's a fucking hot tip for you, dickhead. People get raped, killed, and whatever, every day by other fuckheads. You know, there was a First Amendment auditor slash fucking sovereign cockhead that shot and killed two police officers, right? Not only that, we had one here in Australia, two of them, in fact, here in Australia, that shot and killed three people. But no, why isn't that on your fucking channel? You know why? Because you're a cocksucking fuckhead who's now getting ass raped, and I couldn't be happier. I started filming cops because when I was cheated in 2002. Objection and no, at this point. Relevance. Well, this is the reason we're Shut up, fuck it. So, can you ask him a question? Yes, Your Honor. What type of films do you make for your YouTube channel? I only film police in their official capacity. I'm known across the country and across the world. <laughs> and why? Uh, You're you huge in that? Uganda, mate. Massive. So I'm going to ask you, Mr. Need to direct your questions about the incident in question. The reason I was filming Mr. Gorth that day. Objection, Your Honor. Oh, sorry. So there wasn't a question posed. Sorry. Right. Mr. DeCastro, um, on the dating question, why did you approach that vehicle? I was filming that cop because that's what I do for a living. I am a member of the press, and I invoke <laughs> my right to be press. I always invoke my right to be press within the first 10 seconds of engaging with police, and I have thousands of videos to prove this. So this is how you make money? This is not how specifically I make money. I make money from selling legal documents to people. Legal documents? Legal documents? You recall the officer telling you to back up? Yes, I do. And when what did you do after he told you to back up? I took a couple steps back. I just showed him that I was willing to back up a little bit. However, I'm proud. They, in Arizona, they created a 10 foot law. Objection, relevance, we're not in Arizona. It's the state of Nevada. So I'm going to allow it because I think that goes to why he kept saying 10 feet in the video, even though um, I will take judicial notice that you're not in the state of Arizona, you're in the state of Nevada. Well, a federal judge struck it down, Your Honor. And Stop. What? Can you ask him a question? <laughs> I love this judge. Yes, Ryan. Um, approximately how many feet did you back up? I backed up a foot or two. I was at least 10 feet away from Three the car. Three penises. This driver was pulled over in. And when you spoke to the driver, what did you say? Just after she was okay. The, the reason I filmed police is because they abuse people so often. Was she being abused? Do you recall the officer telling you not to speak with the driver? Yes. And did you uh, make any statements to the driver after that command was given? Absolutely not. Did the officer ever give you a specific distance to back up to? No, he didn't. If he did, would you have complied with that? Sure. Did you believe you were complying with the officer's commands? 100%. I also informed him I'm a member of the press and a constitutional law scholar that this is what I do. Oh, oh, he's opened the door there. He's opened the door. A, a, a good prosecutor, and I'm not saying she's not, would explore that. And again, I haven't seen this video, so I don't know if she does that or not. But he's opened the door stating that he is a constitutional law scholar. So that door's now open. That can now be used against him in evidence. Do you recall the officer explaining to you why he decided to arrest you? There's several parts to the reason why he said he was going to arrest me. Now he said he was going to arrest me because I wouldn't turn my head a certain direction. If Incorrect. I didn't turn and face the car with my head, that he would place me under arrest instead of just giving me a ticket. Do you recall him explaining why he decided to detain you before he arrested you? He decided to obtain me because he said I was obstructing, mm -hmm. which from my understanding is a physical act where All I don't right. have to get in the way. He said that the driver deserved privacy. I believe my First Amendment rights are not up for feelings. Yep, spot on, Griffey. Did he explain to you that the basis of your detention was... Being a fuckhead? ...related primarily to the issue of privacy or the issue of you backing up? 
the issue of obstructing well, the bullet. What's the issue? That's when we can see that he's scared of the driver, scared of me, scared of everything. Oh, 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 Jesus. So I had two cameras out. It's identified as a member of the press. I'm sorry, repeat the question. I'm Did he just say... <laughs> Oh, Chili, even a good lawyer can't win this for you now. You have opened so many doors to bullshit that you're going to get torn apart. Worse, probably, than what your anus is currently being pulled apart from. I want to get it specific for this record. Sure. Um, the question was, did the officer explain to you that the basis of your detention was because of you not backing up or because of the privacy issue of the driver? It was both. He said that told me to back up i backed up a little bit then he said she deserves privacy and then i told him to go get your car little doggy <laughs> and write your ticket and at that point his face turned beet red and his veins and his neck stuck out because we were over 20 feet away and you had to holler to hear each other because the wind was probably 30 miles an hour we all watched the video fuck eh? like literally a few seconds ago did you at any point um attempt to hit any of the officers involved no Absolutely not. Did you uh, intentionally swat any of the officers? Absolutely not. He was giving me unlawful hey, commands. Welcome back. Should not have been detained after I identified as a member of the press. If he ever reached a hand out towards me, I wrestle and teach MMA and I have for ah. years. So it's just a natural reaction as I'm retreating from somebody. If I may have put my hand up, as he said, as he testified himself, I certainly am a law-abiding citizen. I don't break the law. You don't break the law, but you have multiple charges in multiple states, and you've already been done once before for drug possession and, and distribu distributing or trafficking or whatever the fuck it was. But you're a law-abiding citizen that happens to be a member of the press, and now, on record, on public record, an MMA cage-fighting trainer. Right. I can't wait. For, yeah, please tell me this cross-examine. Oh, please tell me this cross-examine. So I would not have tried to assault an officer under any circumstances. G'day, P. Barnes. Is it possible that uh, during the interaction there was inadvertent contact between you and the officer? Sure, he decided to go hands-on with me when he was giving me unlawful commands. And there was absolutely no reason for it. I was wondering oh, if you have anything to ask within yeah. reason. Because I don't want to have a fist fight with another street, with another man on the street. If it was a woman, I chilly would have been all over it. He would do you have recall the officer or the fucking to started hitting her? Yeah, active warrants too. And what did you do? Did that cat's liar? Initially, I told him no, but then when he began to get physical with me and start to grab me and touch me, I said, "Okay, I'll go over to your car." His car was thirty-five feet away. Hey, and I led him to his car. It's on video. You can see it. I would walk right up to his car, and then he insisted still on grabbing me. Hey, Simon. After he saw me pull out an additional phone which that's what press people do. We have lots of cameras on us. I'm, yeah, and I, I've done red carpets. I've done massive media press conferences. I have sat with Sarah Jessica Parker, Bob Geldof, uh, the list goes on, but this is, I'm not wanting to talk about accolades. I'm trying to set the scenario here. Not once, not fucking once, have I ever seen a reporter pull out a phone to record everything on, unless they're on the scene and there's like, the shit is happening right there in front of them. Let alone pull out a secondary phone to get a better angle. They're not fucking, you... oh. And did you inform uh, the officer? 57, 59 people, fuck oh, it, what's going times. on here? There's, it's, in the, it's in the transcripts. I've transcribed them myself several times. I told them I'm get the press. Let's and say did you explain to the years. officer that um, you have a background in constitutional law? Yes, I told him I'm a constitutional law scholar, which was a moniker given to me by other people who are also, they have their own channels, their own press, and that's what some <laughs> other lawyers on did. another channel called me three years ago. And I've since adapted the moniker. Hang on, whoa, 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 whoa. So because someone called you at some stage, some fucking loony on the internet called you a constitutional law scholar, you just adopted that as a thing. Right. Okay. I get it. I can't say much. I'm a captain. That's my thing. 
Um, but I don't run off into the street. You know, I, I, I have a YouTube channel where I'm the captain, uh, but I, I, I don't use me being a captain to walk onto a military barracks and say, well, fucking hold on, everyone. Someone on the internet once called me the captain and I just sort of stuck. So it pretty much legally means I'm in control. I'll sign out my tank now and I'll bring it back when I'm fucking ready. And just to get some, I guess, further background, were you looking for a uh, police to report on this particular day? Yes. No. No, there's, there's the cops hide on the side of the road so you pull people over. It's pretty regular in our country. I was just in the parking lot there. I saw that Mr. Bork had somebody pulled over, concerned for her safety. I began to film. And why do you think um, that law enforcement traffic stops are <laughs> relevant to the public? That's where most people get killed. That's some relevance. Yes. Yeah. Still that question. Who is right? Still I'll pass the witness around. I have no questions for this witness. Thank you. Sir. Oh, that would have been perfect. Or they should just let him have enough this right. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Any argument by the state? Your Honor, the state uh, has to find the defendant guilty of both. So b before we get into closing arguments, she's missed the prime opportunity to, to tear him to fucking shreds on cross-examine, but she knows it's not worth her time nor effort because he's hung himself pretty badly in front of the judge anyway. The judge has seen through all his bullshit, but the door's now open. If you're the prosecution in another state that has to deal with this fuckhead, know the fact that he has opened the door on the stand, on public record, on his claims, because that would be, yeah. Disrupting a public officer as well as resisting a public officer charged against him. Um, the video very adequately portrays, and I don't think it's disputed by the defendant, um, the, the, what the context was of the interaction with the officer. Um, I would venture to say that had the defendant just complied with the original order to not engage with the driver and to back up, we wouldn't be here. He wouldn't have found himself further engaging with Officer Moore. Um, this is not a First Amendment issue. Um, as you heard over and over and over again, um, on, on the video, Officer Bork did not have a problem with the defendant recording. It was a, it's not a, it's not a first um, amendment issue, it's an officer safety issue. Um, here, you have an officer who conducted a lawful traffic stop. You saw the nature of the stop. There was no animosity between the officer and the driver. It was rather peaceful. They were engaged, banter back and forth. Um, he would have, he, as he testified, he was trying to determine whether he was going to cite her or let her go with a warning. Um, and then you have an individual, the defendant, introduce himself to a situation. Traffic stops, Your Honor, are inherently dangerous, particularly in, in crowded parking lots. Uh, I guess anywhere, you know, I would venture to say. This officer had, was reasonable in thinking that anyone who would approach in the manner that the defendant approached um, this his scene, um, would have a reason to fear for his safety or at least be suspicious of this individual's motives coming in. The officer had no problem with the recording. The officer had no problem with the defendant observing. It was when he inserted himself into this lawful detention that was occurring with the Hyundai driver that the officer turned his attention onto the defendant. This is not a First Amendment issue. This is an individual who took his work, what he perceived to be his rights, too far. The officer was well within his right as well as acting reasonably when he asked him to back up. That 21 foot rule, it, it, it's, it's appropriate. He said that was the training that they received um, in terms of the distance that's allowed for someone who needs to, to do them harm. It's a threat as, um, assessment. Um, we don't know when the defendant approached whether he had a, a gun concealed, whether he had a knife um, concealed, whether he had other weapons. And you'll hear multiple times in the video, Officer Bork yelling, stop reaching, stop reaching. This is an unknown, you know, when defense counsel asked Officer Bork all of these questions about how it is that you do this, and Officer Bork kept responding, it depends on the situation, it depends on the totality of the circumstances. Here was an officer acting alone, individually, engaged one-to-one -one with a driver. Um, but he had no problem with it. You, you insert another individual who who enters the scene 
um, in the manner that the defendant did. Um, and now this officer's um, attention is going to be divided. He had every reason to fear for his safety as well as, as that of the driver. I, again, if he had just complied with the officer's commands or demands to back up, and you know, a lot was made about, hey, he didn't have an opportunity to tell the, um, the defendant exactly how far back. As the officer testified, even just with the, hey, back up, the defendant didn't back up, not willingly. That's why the officer had to continue to engage with him and force him um, into this into the situation. Had he complied, he would not have been charged with obstruction. Had he complied initially, he would not have been charged with the resisting. The officer was, I mean, you are gonna have to assess credibility. There's nothing in the video um, or, or Officer Gordon's testimony that would cause the court to question his veracity or his intention for that matter. Um, he was very honest in that he didn't believe the defendant wasn't trying to harm him necessarily with the squat. That's why the defendant wasn't charged with the battery on a, a, a protected person or a police officer. Um, but that SWAT, Your Honor, I would argue, was meant to resist. At that point in time, the officer was trying to detain him and subsequently arrest him on the, on the obstruction um, as depicted in the video. And so at this point, I think we proved by um, beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant did hinder um, Officer Board's investigation um, and detention of the, the Hyundai driver and that he resisted um, uh, the officer's um, arrest and um, or attempt to arrest him. And so we would ask that you find the defendant guilty of both. Right. Yep. You. I want this I want this girl to marry me. That is awesome. Yes, Your Honor. Um, so first of all, you cannot obstruct an unlawful order. Um, I disagree with the state that this is not a First Amendment issue. Uh, the First Amendment in, in this context actually has two parts. There's the filming and the right to film within a, a reasonable distance. Um, the case law in all the federal circuits, Your Honor, it, there's no 21 feet um, rule that's been approved by any court of which I'm aware, uh, but there is a 10 foot rule um, that seems to be the rule that is applied by most of the federal circuits in interpreting the First Amendment. Um, I, I submitted a bench brief that, that kind of goes through that issue if the courts had a chance to review that. I don't have that. Okay. When did you submit it? Um, it was submitted yesterday, Your Honor. I mean, at this point, I would move to strike because it's, it's untimely, um, but I got it this morning when I walked into court. Go ahead. So, the officer's testimony to that, there's essentially this 21 foot distance where anybody can charge an officer and cause physical harm to an officer. If that is applied universally, Your Honor, it, it totally uh, diminishes and violates the First Amendment. That is, as the officer testified, a 21 foot radius that he can attempt to impose. I believe his testimony was anytime there's not an obstacle between a, a person and um, somebody that law enforcement is interacting with. And, and that's just not what the law requires, Your Honor. The First Amendment gives uh, their, their media, new media, old media, it gives uh, individuals the right to film government agents. There's um, no dispute that that's the requirement. And if the officer is applying this 21 foot uh, circumference to all law enforcement interactions, he's effectively eliminated the ability to film uh, law enforcement going about their, their duties. Um, well, let him film inside the a burning building. Then. Did not talk to the driver. Are also um, not not based on any uh, actual legal justification. There's no right to privacy in, in public, um, whether you're engaged with law enforcement or not. There's uh, no requirement or no statute, no law that uh, citizens can't interact with drivers that are uh, interacting with law enforcement. Um, so what's, what's taken place here, Your Honor, is that this officer has taken it upon himself to essentially uh, act, act as the uh, le legislature um, and created these rules that have no basis in um, any law and, in fact, are contrary to the First Amendment. Um, again, he can't obstruct an unlawful demand, so uh, there is no obstruction of justice here. He um, can the stores, arrest, right? Your Honor. The court can see the, the video. Um, essentially what happened is he walked over to the front of the vehicle, 
There was some dispute about why he was being detained. That was discussed. Um, the case law in that area, Your Honor, is that uh, if it's an unlawful arrest, which it was in this case because they're uh, essentially arresting him for uh, violating these unlawful orders that they're um, pronouncing, um, he, again, the case law is you can passively resist an unlawful arrest, and that's all that occurred here, Your Honor. Thank you. Really? That's, that's your defense. A bunch of bullshit right, that has no Castro, legal basis. Smart move. The oh, problem with the argument that your attorney makes is it completely fails to consider the safety of the officer and the safety of the driver. Oh, bam. The officer doesn't know who you are, and the driver doesn't know who you are. And you don't have any right to interfere with that officer doing his investigation and deciding if he wants to issue a ticket to this driver. Oh, preach, and lady. I also don't have any business approaching the driver. Oh, preach. I didn't ask you for help. The driver didn't say, help, help, you know. You didn't see an altercation happening between the officer and this driver. Um, the officer didn't protest that you were filming. There's no problem with filming. You can film, it's fine, all right? But you did interfere with his investigation. You did interfere with his ability to do his job. Bam! You did put him in a position where he is concerned for his safety and the safety of the driver. Oh, sing it so loud! The state's met their burden beyond reasonable doubt. I'm going to find you guilty of obstructing the public officer Woo! and resisting the public officer. Yes! So I'd like to hear from the state and then your attorney for our sentencing. Oh, fan fucking tastic! Well played. For sentencing, I would ask um, the uh, defendant to enter and complete a um, an impulse control class. I would ask that the court lobby a $500 fine or the equivalent in community service. I would ask that the defendant be ordered to stay out of trouble um, for the pendency of the case. <laughs> um, and I would ask for a 90-day suspended sentence. Suspended? You've been lenient. And then talk as to each count to one concurrent. Your Honor, I'm asking the court to sentence the defendant to credit for time served for these offenses. Um, even if the court concludes, and, and the court did conclude that he didn't have the right to do what he did, um, I, I think the court can see that he sincerely believed uh, that, that he had the right to do so. Um, yeah, but also that that's based on his past experiences and the, the training he's received in reference to the First Amendment. Training um, he received. In, in, intent from the defendant to engage in any wrongdoing in this case, Jesus. Your Honor. Um, and that being the case, especially because of the public policy interests at, at issue. So when you say he doesn't wish to engage in any wrongdoing, it seems to me from observing him in the video that he wants, he wants this. He wants to get arrested. He yeah. wants to get into an altercation with police officers. Oh, Welcome let's send her flowers. This his YouTube channel. Yes! And he called the officers here in my courtroom today pigs. Oh! He called the, and he's not his head up and down. I so apparently he hates every law enforcement oh. officer in the United States. Oh, hey! Yeah, sir. You oh, you are fucked! Um, I, I would just emphasize, Your Honor, that the defendant testified and he sincerely believes that he is providing a public service um, when he reviews... Been proven that he wasn't. Incidents. He's guilty. Um, no no fight. The court may have a different view of that, but... When we're talking about First Amendment public policy issues such as um, supervising uh, people involved in government, I, I think that is something the court can take into consideration, not to have a show effect on that. Let's go on, Your Honor. Yeah, sit down. Mr. Castro, please stand. Fuck him up. I hereby sentence you to 90 days in the Clark County Detention Center on count one, 90 days in the Clark County Detention Center on count two, to run consecutive for a total of 180 days in custody. Oh! Thank you. Suspended or? Oh no, I'm gonna start right now. Oh, it starts right now! You are fucking gone! You fucked around and found out! Oh, everyone, give her a round of applause!
Justice. Hey, it is! This is exactly what justice is for! Oh, two set of cuffs, you fat cunt. No. You can go to fucking jail. Six months in jail. Suck a fucking fat one. Well, he will. He'll be sucking a lot of fat ones. Hey, quick, show him your trifold, Chili. Show him your trifold, mate. You're a fucking constitutional law scholar. You shouldn't have to put up with this. You show him. Go back in there. You know, preach. You know, fucking put you what you're preaching into practice, mate. You fucking, you tell everybody on YouTube, hey, you're a fucking constitutional law scholar and there is no fucking way you're going to jail. Sue him for $5 million, mate. Why did you let him put you in cuffs? You're a fucking trained MMA fighter, mate. You could have fucking done some kung fu on him. But no, you didn't. You know why? Because you know you're full of shit. You're a fucking grifter. You try and rot your fucking cult members out of their cash. And now you get your fucking comeuppance. And I can't wait for Bubba to release the body cam footage of him fucking you like a small animal. Oh, dude. I really hope you come out as someone's bitch. I really, really do. You have to be the dumbest cunt I have ever ever witnessed and I have worked in the prison system and I met smarter inmates on methadone than you oh my fucking god I feel like I need to go and have a, a jerk of me penis I'm that excited fucking hell bam you couldn't have asked for a better outcome the def even the prosecution was like 90 days suspended sentence $500 fine or community service to its equivalent the defense goes oh look how about just time served and the judge went, fucking no. <laughs> Your client came in here and called my fucking officers pigs and hates every law enforcement official in the United States of America. So here's me double barreled shotgun and it's fucking boom, 90 days on this trigger and fucking boom, 90 days on that trigger. And I hope to fuck there's liquid soap in those showers, Chili. I hope to God you're scrambling on the ground to find a contact lens as fucking Bubba and the boys ride you like a Ferris wheel around and around the jailhouse. Oh, what a fucking video. What an absolute turnout tonight as well. Thank you so very much, everybody that has come and watched this uh, live stream with me from start to finish. Anyone that's watching it on replay as well, I hope it's been as entertaining for you as it has been for us. It has been one hell of a night and um, honest, I, I don't even know where to fucking go with this. How do we top that off? Like, that is just... It's something we've all been waiting for, isn't it? We've all, we all knew this was coming. And the fun thing is, is he still has pending charges in other fucking states. He still has active warrants in other states. And now this judge has set the fucking bench. She's like, boom, this is, this is what I'm going to do. And this will go on his record. So when he's facing crimes that he's committed in other states and in court in other states, they will see exactly what this judge has done today. And I personally want to thank her. I fucking feel like going over, I feel like I owe her sex. That's how fucking good she was. Like I feel that she deserves some good sex, if not from me, from her husband or her partner or whatever, whatever the case is, she needs to go home and get porked for a job well fucking done. Same as that uh, prosecution uh, lady. She needs to go home and get absolutely ridden like a rhino for the wonderful work she's done. And fucking high five to the defense attorney for fucking it up really, really well. So he ends up in jail. I hope you get some butt sex from me as well, big fella. You did a great job fucking it up for him. So <laughs> job well done there. Oh, fucking hell. This has been absolutely phenomenal, guys. Big thank you literally to each and every one of you that have actually, you know, stuck around, watched the entire uh, live stream, watched us on replay if you can. Uh, it has been a long video. It's been a long night, but thank you so very, very much. And I know true well that this has been covered on some other great channels uh, here on YouTube. So if you want to have actual legal breakdowns of them, feel free to actually watch those channels because <laughs> I'm here for the comedy, mate. I'm here to make people fucking laugh. So... Hopefully I've done that along with you tonight. So thank you so very, very much. 
I better get going though because Anne Hathaway has been knocking on the back door now for about 35 minutes. What it, what it is, she, whenever she hears me go to the toilet, she can hear me old fucking, me old fella touch the bottom of the bucket there and she's like, ooh, it's like a cat bell, mate. As soon as she hears it, her pussy becomes more wet than Lake Michigan. So she's at the door fucking, it almost looks like someone's out there feeding a horse ice cube. So I need to go out and deal with that before the neighbours start talking again. But nonetheless... What an absolutely fantastic video. Thank you so very, very much for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful night. I hope you have a bit of a laugh. I hope you've clicked that like button, that subscribe button, because now you can take your shirts off, get naked if you want, and celebrate the fact that we don't have to deal with fucking chili for six whole months. How good is it? Don't forget you can catch uh, Welsh News Network when they do their live uh, in about... 19 hours or you know 18 hours from now on their channel so check out walsh news network uh for their live stream tomorrow i'm sure they will be a very entertaining on that channel as well fraud of patrols channel that covers it you know um I'm, I'm sure you know dgen nation and and, and ben bolan and all those sort of guys will cover it as well so if you want proper legal breakdowns of things uh check that out check out um law talk with mike he also has done a pretty good breakdown of the video as well so I've got to get running now. Oh, fucking Terry. Fucking let me tell you about Terry. Oh, we're at the bar the other day, Terry and I, and we're fucking just chilling out in the bar. And out of nowhere, ladies and gentlemen, a fucking horse walks into the bar. And Terry, thinking he's fucking cool like that, turns to the horse and says, Hey, horse, why the long face? And the horse just stared at him and shit on the ground. And I'm like, Terry, horses don't speak English, you fucking idiot. Fucking Terry. All right, that's it. Hurry, have a good one. I'll talk to you tomorrow with the next video. So uh, until uh, next video, I can take your shirts off. Get naked if you want. Hurry.